All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Super Stripe ball python. The Super Stripe actually consists of two genes, the Spectre and the Yellow Belly, and it's actually an allelic complex. So if you actually take a Super Stripe, you breed it to something else, half the offspring come out as Yellow Belly and half come out as Spectre. And the interesting thing about both the Yellow Belly and the Spectre is that they're not really that impressive by themselves. As a matter of fact, you'd probably be hard pressed to tell the difference between those two and a normal class wild type ball python. When you mix them together you get some really impressive results and if you can actually work other genes into the super stripe it has some pretty amazing potential of what you can produce with super stripe combos. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to jump over to the internet and I want to show you the amazing potential of the super stripe. All right, so I'm going to jump over here on MorphMarket.com, and this is what a Super Stripe looks like. Pretty impressive. And the first thing you notice about this snake is it has a really strong stripe right down the top. It's like, like a stripe that is super sized, and I think that's where it gets its name. And usually the stripe down the top is outlined in black on either side of the stripe. It makes the stripe stand out even more. And if you kind of look at the sides, you actually, actually can see most of the times on a lot of Super Stripes, you see a lot of pattern coming through the sides. Sometimes it looks almost mesmerizing. It's like sometimes it's a really faint pattern. Sometimes it sticks out a little bit more, especially in some combos. And usually the super stripes, I'd say in most cases, it has a really interesting head stamp. The pattern on the head is pretty crazy for the super stripe. So I kind of want to show you what happens when you breed the super stripe to a normal ball python. This is what you get right here. This is a specter or a yellow belly. Either one it looks really close to a normal ball python. I say that's probably one of the challenges of actually working with this specific combination because a lot of times you don't really know what you get. First is if you actually had a recessive gene and like for example if you had a pied you breed it to something else you know there's a hundred percent chance that it has one copy of the recessive pie gene and this is like almost like there's a 50 percent chance it's spectre 50 percent chance it's yellow belly so it's a little bit more complicated to figure out what genes are actually actually in the mix when you're breeding it to other non super stripe combos. So kind of what I want to do is I want to go through some of these base morphs and then add them to the super stripe so you can see the potential of mixing other genes in with the super stripe. So I want to start with the pastel. The pastel is really popular in ball pythons. It's probably like the bread and butter of ball pythons. It's really inexpensive and essentially what pastel does is it reduces the pattern. You can definitely see there's a lot of pattern reduction here and it brings out a lot of the yellow and there's different lines of pastel sometimes they can be a lot more bright as far as the yellow and sometimes the, the patterns can be reduced more or less and this is what happens if you take pastel and work it into the super stripe take a look at this crazy snake that is really wild it's probably one of the most amazing pastel super stripes that I've ever seen and it's, it's kind of interesting some pastels really don't bring out this much white in in the background and sometimes it does and I'd say this is kind of similar to the highways and the freeways sometimes with certain lines of pastel you can actually see a bright white background and sometimes with different lines of pastel sometimes it'll bring out a little more yellow sometimes a lot more yellow instead of the white on the background if you kind of take a look at this thing this is so impressive look at the head stamp on this really awesome and it's interesting the stripe is super yellow right down the back still outlined in the this kind of a black highlight around the, the super stripe that comes right down the top. Pretty amazing combo. So here's another one. This is actually a pastel with the Enchi. And the Enchi is essentially, the Enchi brings out a little bit more yellow and it also reduces the pattern even more. This is what happens when you take the pastel Enchi and you work it into a super stripe. Take a look at that. That is really impressive. And I really love the way the Enchi just really scrambles up the pattern even more along the sides. And you can definitely see the really crazy head stamp. The head stamps kind of remind me of clown combos. A lot of times in the clowns almost always you get a really crazy pattern on the head and this is still has the super stripe coming right down the top outlined in black pretty amazing snake 
So here is a lemon blast. I actually produce a few lemon blasts every year. This is actually the pastel and the pinstripe gene mixed together. This is what happens when you take a lemon blast and you work it into a super stripe. Take a look at this. This is pretty amazing. It actually completely, almost completely gets rid of the stripe on the top. You can see it just a little bit with a little bit of a black outline, but this almost looks kind of like a champagne combo. It's, it's really neat that this is actually working in different ways with different genes to give you really dramatic visual differences between the different combinations. And look at the head on this thing. That thing is crazy. Almost like a, a completely white head with a little bit of gray. It almost doesn't even look real from looking at the head and the neck coming down the snake. That is pretty wild. So here is the cinnamon. The cinnamon is a dark morph. It works really well with a lot of combos. In a lot of combos, the cinnamon likes to kind of streak out the patterns on the sides, kind of jumbles it up. This is what happens when you mix the cinnamon with the super stripe. Take a look at this. This is the super stripe on a dark morph background, which is kind of interesting that it's, it's not so visually dominant like some genes where you actually can't have that much of an influence. But I'd say it's pretty visually dominant that it, you know, it's almost over taking the cinnamon it gives you this really kind of a smooth chocolatey kind of a, a, an appearance to it and you can still see some of the patterns on the side and you can still see pretty much the characteristic really solid line coming right down the top of the snake outlined in black here is the spider ball python. The spider is a really impressive standalone morph, just one single gene. And you kind of have to be careful of the spider because if you breed two spiders together, it's actually considered a lethal combination. So if you have two snakes and you breed them together, you only really want spider in one of them, not both of them. And this is what happens when you mix spider with the super stripe. And I find this kind of amazing that the super stripe, you can almost still see the stripe coming right down the back and it almost trumps the pattern of the spider to where it kind of wipes it out. As a matter of fact, if someone handed me the snake, I probably couldn't tell that spider was in the mix. Makes for a really interesting combo. Here is the fire. The fire is a really powerful gene. Usually when you mix fire in with other combos, essentially what it does is it really lightens and cleans up the background. Usually makes for really impressive combos, especially if you mix it with genes like, like Orange Dream or Pastel or something like that. And the fire is actually not in the blue-eyed leucistic. If you actually breed two fires together, you'll get a super fire, which is an all-white snake with black eyes. Kind of interesting. Here's what happens when you mix fire in with with super stripe take a look at this this is kind of interesting you kind of it's kind of the characteristic of the fire to really lighten the snake in a lot of combos you can definitely see the influence of the fire really bringing in a lot of the lighter kind of a kind of lightening up the background in the super stripe so here is the banana. The banana is pretty interesting. It's actually a co-dominant mutation, and this has the whole male-female sex link kind of thing going on. So if you actually take a male maker banana, you breed it to something else, all the banana offspring come out as males. Kind of a weird genetic anomaly that's only in bananas and coral glows. Coral glows and bananas are essentially the same thing. This is what happens when you mix banana in with the super stripe. And take a look at this. This has to be hands down one of my favorite combos. This is so amazing. And the interesting thing about bananas is usually when they're really small hatchlings, they have a lot of this purple and orange and really crazy colors. And as they mature, they tend to fade out a little bit. So this is kind of a kind of a one of a kind snake that probably only keeps this really intense color as a hatchling. And I've yet to seen one that that's kind of keeps all the purples and oranges as far as the banana in with other morphs as an adult. So here is the black pastel. The black pastel is another dark morph. The super black pastel is almost a completely black snake, and it's one step towards making the panda pied, which is a black and white ball python. Really awesome. This is what happens when you make mix in black pastel with the super stripe. Take a look at this, and this, this is kind of the foundation. I kind of wanted to show you this before I went one step further. I actually added this, the black pastel super stripe with the banana super 
Super Stripe. And take a look at the combination between these two. That is really crazy. And it's kind of interesting. Sometimes you mix in one gene. Maybe it's not that impressive. But then you, you, you kind of realize the potential of what you can do with some of those genes mixed with other genes. And this has to be one of the most amazing Super Stripes that I've ever seen. The Banana Black Pastel Super Stripe. And it's, it's really interesting on this one. It almost, the, I think it's the banana that's kind of taking away the black line that's outlining the stripe right down the top. The banana is really visually dominant. It's kind of interesting how all these genes mix together. So here's the last one I wanted to show you, the Pinstripe Super Stripe. And this is probably one of my favorite combos. You know, Pinstripe is, I'd say the Pinstripe is, as far as a standalone gene, is one of my favorites because it's like a super bright gold ball python. You can't really get a brighter gold ball python than the Pinstripe. This is what happens when you mix Pinstripe in with the Super Stripe. Take a look at this snake. It almost looks like it has glitter all over it, like gold glitter. It's so awesome. I think this is probably probably one of my favorite pinstripe combos mixing it in with other genes because a lot of times when you take pinstripe you mix it into something else a lot of times it takes away from the gold color and this almost enhances it and makes it look so much better the pinstripe super stripe all right, so it is time for the question of the day. In irrigation, Tim asks, how many genes can be in one ball python? Is it eight or 10 or is it unlimited? And that is a very good question. As far as I know, the number of genes you can actually put in one snake is pretty much unlimited. And I've actually seen a lot of people kind of go down this route where they'll buy something with five or six genes, they'll breed it to something else with five or six genes. And a lot of times when they produce the offspring, they aren't really sure exactly exactly what's in the snake. I've actually seen some people, you know, they show a whole clutch, maybe on one of the reptile forums, and they're like, hey, there's, there could be up to 12 genes in any of these snakes. Help me identify these. And a lot of times, you actually can't identify them. And I say that's probably one of the drawbacks of going for really heavy multi-gene animals, is you start guessing a lot of times at what's actually in the snake. And you get to the point where you see a lot of these breeders that are doing kind of this approach with a lot of genes in a snake. And you get to the point where you own almost don't trust them because you know a lot of times they're actually guessing because it's almost impossible to try to figure out what genes are in the mix. Although it can kind of work in your favor if you have someone that kind of estimates kind of on the conservative side. They say, hey, we know there's these three genes in there and it's possible they could have these other five genes. Sometimes you can pick up a really good deal at a fairly reasonable price with all the possible genes that could be in the mix. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.